Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video I'm showing off a little planet coaster project that I've been working on in the background. So as you can see in the background I've actually been kind of doing this in, in my spare time. I've built a pretty cool B&M hyper coaster. Um, I'd probably say the main kind of inspiration for this would probably be like Silver Star and Shambhala. Kind of similar bits, obviously it's not exactly the same. Um, completely my own design but I have completely custom supported this whole area. So the name I've gone for is Fear, because um, I think it kind of fits quite nicely. And I'm a massive fan of the theme in around the Swarm Islands. So I've kind of gone for that sort of vibe where it's like very run down, almost kind of like military. And we've got like the kind of shipping container bits. Um, so yeah, just a quick kind of overview of the layout. It's pretty big in comparison to the rest of the park. Um, it stands absolutely miles above the rest of the rides that I've got here. Like I say, this is just my um, my kind of play around park. This is just where I've been testing. Just start getting back into the swing of things with Planet Coaster, ready for Planet Coaster 2. Obviously, you'll recognize a couple. We've got this, we've got the um, multi launch coaster, some else I'm working on here, and something else I'm working on. Um, so, yeah, this is pretty much the area. It kind of sits on this island. I didn't want it all to be on an island, I wanted some bits to go over water and stuff. So, yeah, into the theme in I've kind of gone with the like say the almost like rundown kind of destroyed military kind of thing there you, go, you can see it going in the background there and um, there's plenty of like airtime moments and stuff in this I tried to keep it as kind of secluded as I can so you kind of come over this bridge from where the first video well second video sorry I did the toxic tangle so you kind of come straight into its own area and it kind of picks up quite a bit of speed quite quickly this one does to be fair um, I've used quite a bit of workshop items as well, so I know this <laughs> This is from one of the, um, I think it was a Fort Park recreation I downloaded. Um, so what I will do is I will find all these items and I will just link them. But we've got obviously like test seats here just to add that extra little bit of, I won't say realism because I don't think it's too realistic. Um, but I've tried my hardest to get it as good as I can. Also I've made this kind of custom this is um, another workshop item, these letterings, and I've just added the little poles in beneath. So I've got like a standard entrance similar to what you would find at a normal theme park. And then I've also, this isn't functional, but it's here. I've also added a single rider. So these kind of go through these shipping containers and then you kind of go into the main queuing system. So obviously the main queue kind of follows down here. And then you kind of go into this kind of like cattle grid kind of thing. Obviously under the track it's got like netting above, so you get some quite um, quite close bits. And then pretty much the single rider queue almost follows it down. Obviously we've had to kind of break it here because obviously in real life it'd probably be a little bit further down, but I couldn't get it past this because obviously it kind of swoops down quite low here. So again, back into what, almost like a cattle grid kind of thing. And then you kind of go up the stairs at the side into the back of the station. And then over on this side as well, just obviously taking in that extra little bit of realism, I guess. And we've got like a little ride photos bit, we've got the exit and the accessibility route to get up. So obviously with the space restraints that I had, I had to be a little bit more creative. So I've had to create like um, just a little ramp. And then because we've got actual stairs here, I've made like a little stair lift using the, <laughs> the B&M seats from the workshop. So that almost goes to the top and then similar to some other parks you kind of access through the um, through the entry, sorry not through the entry, through the exit sorry. So that will kind of take you up and then oh yeah, the car's just going past now. Um, and so we've got the station built in, I wanted to keep this quite quite small. I wanted to give it that like almost destroyed kind of look where it's got bits of wall missing. Obviously main inspiration for this is the swarm station at Fort Park. Obviously you do dispatch from a destroyed church, so it just kind of nice little nod to that. And then I've got like the little maintenance area here. So I've never really done these before in many of my builds, but I thought it'd be quite cool to actually do this. So obviously I've got two kind of standby tracks. Um, obviously they kind of work on here and then if they needed to run like a one train service, they'd kind of do that. And then, yeah, the custom support. So this is my first time ever doing custom support, so a lot of <laughs> blood, sweat and tears went into it. It was it was a lot, but we got there in the end. I tried to keep it as kind of realistic as I could. They were just using the 
and m hyper supports from the workshop i've also built a couple of like custom near misses so these kind of bits here where the train can fly through and obviously we've got the the billboard that is off the workshop we've kind of got like a tank overgrown down here we've got this little portal that you kind of go through and it's got like steam coming down we've got a little ride photo bit here so it catches you just off the first drop which is quite a quite a steep drop well yeah I think the profile of this is quite nice it sits really nicely like on the skyline of the park it's quite a nice thing to have in the background obviously this is <laughs> complete like playthrough so it's not really anything not like a functioning park it's just where I put all my creations into but yeah I think it adds quite a nice background to the to the back of the park actually to be fair so um, yeah, what I'll do is I'll hop straight into a POV so you can see it. And then I'll pop some stats and stuff up as well if anyone's interested just to see them. Okay, so the POV, I won't talk for this bit, I'll just let it run around and then we'll kind of go through my design thoughts and the process of designing it. So with this bit here, um, obviously there was quite a bit of space and I just kind of did like a little bit of an outer bank and then just kind of slowed it down a bit before, um, before you get back into the station as well. Um, I have used a couple of the Steam Workshop items on the side there just to kind of get those those lockers and stuff, sorry. Because obviously in all coaster stations they do have them. So it's just somewhere where you can kind of pop your, pop your bags and stuff. So the these are the stats for it, obviously it's quite a quite a fast coaster, you've got it at 82 miles per hour. I don't know what it is in kilometers per hour if anyone uses that. But um, yeah, biggest drop is 67 meters, and obviously you've got all your g-forces here and stuff. 3.2 seconds of air time, mm, yeah that's probably about right to be fair. I feel like if I didn't bank these or anything, if I kind of did like a Hyperia out of bank turn here, we'd probably have a lot more air time. But yeah, I think it fits into this area quite nicely to be fair. Obviously we've got the pretty cool scenery and layout. I was going to kind of clear some of this area to have like a flat ride, but I think just this bit on its own is enough for what I wanted. Could potentially add like a flat ride down here at some point. Just like delete a couple of these out and have some fern drop tower or some fern, I don't know. But I quite like the, uh, almost like the skyline no matter which way you look at it. So we've got like this kind of adventure area here. We've got something I'm not showing you just yet. <laughs> That'll be coming soon. But yeah, the custom supports as well, they took quite a long time. I know some of them like here, they're not 100% finished, but I've tried to get them all as close to the track. Obviously I'll use the connectors and stuff here just to link them all together. But yeah, the basis for this pretty much, I just kind of set one out. Um, so I think it was this one here actually that I started with. I set that out and I just followed the actual in-game support and then turned it off and then I just kind of advanced moved and just took it down and down and down. And obviously I just made these ones like on the opposite side as well so I could connect those bits. Obviously there's a couple of just like standard supports like here where 
obviously the train is close to the ground, so I'll just use straight supports like there. Let's take a look at the almost like head chop a bit here. So obviously the train comes racing through here, you probably heard it on, <laughs> on the route round. Um, we've got a couple of near miss moments actually to be fair, uh, like this bit here. So this is just a billboard off the workshop, um, just as you come over like this little airtime hill. Um, you also kind of have like a near miss for these um, supports here, so you kind of come flying down and you kind of swoop under here. The other near miss as well, this is just like a little custom thing that I built. Just wanted to keep it looking a little bit modern. But yeah, I quite like that, it's pretty cool. I don't know what I'd call it. Almost like, it's like a portal gate kind of thing, but... Yeah, it's pretty, pretty cool. I'm quite happy with it to be fair, to saying it's like my first ever fully custom custom supports, custom scenery kind of thing. Almost aiming for that as close to realism as I can get. So yeah, what I would like to do is just do like a little walkthrough of the queue whilst it's going round. Just so you can kind of see the bits and bobs and obviously I've kind of rocked all this area out here. And so yeah, let's do that and then we'll just kind of see it from a guest point of view I guess. So um, what I'm using here is just the camera, you know where you rename the person. Um, just kind of using that as my uh, my guide and um, so that just kind of locks a, a ground camera to, to someone I think he's walked off now actually uh, he's around there somewhere <laughs> but um, yeah it just kind of goes through you can obviously zoom in and stuff it's pretty cool to use almost like this kind of angle uh, it's quite a nice shot actually to be fair watching it watching it go around obviously this is from guest height so this is what the guests would see when they're crossing the bridge so it'd be quite a cool photo opportunity, I think, from here. Just to kind of watch it go around and stuff. So let's have um, a little wander into the area. So obviously we've got this kind of like plaza area. Um, I think in the future I'm probably going to put some like food outlets and stuff just in this kind of style. Probably convert like a couple of containers, put one here or something. I think flat ride is possibly the wrong way to go about it. Like I said, I'm not 100% happy with doing a flat ride in this area because I haven't really got the space for it, to be quite honest. If I went that way a bit more, kind of got rid of these trees and went into the ride area, I guess I could. But obviously we're not, not going to be able to do that. So yeah, this is just a little closer look at the test seats. Obviously they do look very similar to Oblivion test seats because Oblivion at Alton Towers is also a BNM, but it's a dive coaster, not a hyper. Um, I believe they're the same track, it's just different cars and obviously different mechanics. So yeah, let's have a little wonder through the queue. We'll just step over the rocks. Yeah, she's not very impressed with here. <laughs> so these are the shipping containers off the workshop. So obviously stood here you can kind of get good uh, moments and stuff of it going round. You can see pretty much all the lift hill which is good. These fences, I believe these aren't Steam Workshop items, I think they're just normal to be quite honest. And so we've got one going there as well. But you can see actually how close you get, so this is why I've put the um, almost like the net in kind of thing, I know it's quite low but obviously it's going to go right above your head so it needs to be, um, needs to be almost secure for, for the guests and stuff. Move that trick out, you didn't see that. But yeah, obviously the supports as well there, using the B&M Hyper supports and stuff. I did download them as a tool, I can't remember what it's called, is it Toolmakers Toolkit or something? Item? I don't know, something along them lines, you know what I'm on about. But I used all them, and obviously using the, the footers and stuff, they're all from the same bit. Um, so this is where the single ride queue joins on to the main queue, so just before you get to this cattle pen, obviously you get some nice stood waiting, oh, pigeon, um, I stand here and watch it dispatch and obviously come down off the, the brake run there. Um, so obviously I imagine on busy days if this was real life it would probably get some white big cues and I just missed it. Great. <laughs> Bad timing as always. Um, and then we go up to, this bit's a little bit dodgy so I'm going to push through this so you don't see how bad it is. Um, and then yeah you're pretty much in the station so obviously you get into your uh, into your queues like you do at any other theme park. Obviously wait for the, the ride to come through, go and pop your bags over. Have a little peek into the maintenance bay. 
Um, I've said these little things as well. These catwalks are custom. Let's cross quickly before I can't cross over actually. Um, we'll have to go back around the other side, but that's fine. Um, we'll just have a quick run through of the queue. Let's just skip over this, it's fine. <laughs> we'll come back out of here. So yeah, back into the plaza area. Um, so you could do with something just to kind of frame this area, I think, just so it feels a bit more secluded. I was going to have this up here, but then if I just go over, I'll just show you what I meant, because I think it looked a little bit too much. <laughs> so I was going to have this sign above here, but it looked, it kind of blocked out the view. So I think I'm just going to have some kind of like metal structure or something across here. Maybe like a tunnel or something, just so we can get, so if you're looking back from here, it doesn't just look like um, you can't really see that in the distance. And then yeah, over to the ride photos. So obviously we've got the screens. These are Steam Workshop item as well. And um, I think I just typed in like ride photo or on ride photo, something like that, and these came up. So I just added them to a group and just kind of did it as you would see. And obviously you can kind of right, those up. around the corner. And obviously you've got the exit and the accessible route. So this is the, the little ramp, so obviously it's a short little ramp and then obviously you've got the, we'll call it the B&M stair lift because it's using the, <laughs> the B&M seats and then obviously you just kind of go up and then obviously someone would help you on to the ride from here if you need it um, and then again also from here you get some pretty cool, cool shots as well if you're kind of stood here with a camera or something that'd be pretty cool and I see both of them going around and stuff. But it does actually fall quite high to be fair. I think looking at it from this angle, it's a lot higher from when you kind of up here, standard camera angle. But yeah, I can't lie, I'd be probably petrified to ride this in real life. <laughs> I think the tallest I've done so far is stealth at Fort Park. At Fort Park sorry. So um, yeah, I think I'd be alright on that to be quite honest. It looks fairly easy, so I don't know. I'll have to get myself to um, Port Adventura and go on Shambhala. <laughs> get myself ready for some hyper coasters or something. But yeah, that is pretty much the area. I don't really know what to kind of call this area. Um, I was thinking of like Fear Island, but I don't know if it goes. So if you've got any name suggestions, so it's not, not critical because this is just like Fair Island Park. But yeah, I wanted to get some cinematics actually of the to kind of go around. I think there's some pretty cool shots that can be can be done. And um, the only thing with this camera as well is if you've got scenery in the area it just kind of goes through it which is a little bit annoying. So I had to hit the hit the brake runs there. I tried to go with the more modern BNM brake runs where they're kind of on a slant. I know quite a lot of the, the dive coasters have them. And then obviously the, the outer bank is just just the way back to get back to the station. It's not anything spectacular I don't think. Yeah, let's have a, have a little cinematic run through. Um, it's the first time I've actually done a hyper coaster in game. I think on console I made like a, a Pepsi Max big one, like a Pleasure Beach kind of one. Um, I find it quite hard to actually get to grips with it on, on console. I don't know if it's just like the controller layout or something, I don't know. But I found my feet a little bit easier on PC. I find the mechanic in this is a little bit of an older version of like Planet Zoo and obviously this channel was mainly Planet Zoo but now we're, we're catering to both sides which is good. For that first drop obviously you'd get quite a bit of the, that stomach feeling going down there and you've got like this kind of like banked, I don't really know what you call this, like bank turn I guess and then obviously you kind of swoop around. I don't know if you'd kind of class that as like a, almost like a wave turn, I don't, I don't actually know. And you kind of just got like that. I'm kind of out of bank there. Um, I was going to do quite a few of like out your seat moments like that, but then I thought so I wanted to kind of have, like pull some pretty cool forces going round. So I kind of wanted it to be more on the inside of the track rather than pushing you out. But I think with this bit here, it's probably going to go through a lot of the scenery. No, that's fine. It's quite a good charge. Quite like that. It's quite a long layout to be fair. I think you definitely get 
a good ride if it was a real life coaster. But yeah, pretty pretty happy with what I've got so far. Um, obviously this this area here probably needs a bit of a refeeing because it just kind of <laughs> sticks out like a sword form. Um, you've got the Darkwood Devil, that was the first coaster I did. Obviously it wasn't a voiceover or anything, just did like a quick little POV of that one. You've got like a little top spin here, a little Halloween area I've been working on, but that's not, yep, that is for, oh, Jesus Christ, look at that queue. That is massive. I think another queue is quite, quite big to be fair. They must be enjoying them. But yeah, I don't know whether to kind of retheme this area next, I don't know. Well, I might just leave it as it is because it was quite cool. But I will give you a quick teaser for what's coming next. I did RMC an existing wooden coaster which I built here. Exactly the same footprint, obviously we just kind of made it a little bit more RMC with the quite high um, out of your seat moments like this. Um, obviously I don't want to, to go into too much but you'll, you know what I mean when, I, when you see this bit. So we RMC'd that. We've got this going here. I'm going to transform this into almost like a, a Max Striker coaster. That gives me massive smiler vibes, I don't know why. Just that bit there. <laughs> yeah, I've not really got anything else I'm working on in this part to be fair. Like I say, it's just a, a little play around just to get me in the in the swing of it for when Planet Coaster 2 comes out. Just kind of get finding my feet again. Playing around with different coasters. Just yeah, having a, having a good time with it really. But yeah, I think I'll leave this one here. I think I'm just going to leave it with some some kind of cinematics going around and stuff, just from like different angles, so you can see like the different drops and just the different elements from bits where I built it from, just so you can see how I wanted it. So yeah, if you have enjoyed this one, like and subscribe, so always appreciated. Drop a comment down below what you want to see next. I need a idea of idea. Sorry, God, I can't talk. An idea for this area here. Um, I was thinking of doing something possibly, I was going to say wooden but obviously we've converted the wood to RMC so I don't think I'm going to do that. We've got, we'll have quite, a, we'll have two launch coasters now so I don't really want to do another launch. We've got an inverted, we've got a fly in, we've got a spin in, that's the first one. That. It's embarrassing. <laughs> um, but we need something here, something cool. I don't know. I'll have a think. But yeah, if you've got any ideas for this footprint here, obviously this area here is kind of like spooky themed. So I don't know whether to extend probably the spooky theme to about there, and then kind of extend this almost like science element kind of theme area here. Obviously this is kind of similar theme to Air at Alton Towers. I don't know whether to expand that out here and cut it off a bit or just get rid of this river altogether and just continue building that that way. For here I've got a pretty cool idea. I've kind of drawn up a couple of plans and stuff. I'm going to do a winged coaster, but I'm not going to say too much what I'm doing. But that's going to go here. It's pretty much turning into um, my own version of Fort Park, I think, with all the different islands and <laughs> all the bits and bobs. But yeah, that is pretty much what I've got so far. So yeah, I'll leave you with some cinematics and then I'll catch you on the next one.